What's up guys, Tektine here and I am back again with a brand new video. So before I begin, as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching this one. If you have subscribed to the channel, thank you. If not, please consider doing so. The subscribe button is right below that like button. If you want to like this video on the way. Also, if you want to follow me on my other social media, they should be linked in the description below. So yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and start with today's video. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Moto E5 Plus. So we're going to be doing an unboxing and first impressions. And Motorola lately have released a lot of budget phones. And the naming is kind of getting ridiculous. So they have they have this phone in a Moto E5 Play. They have the Moto E6 Play. They have the Moto E4. I don't know. The naming is kind of crazy. But this phone looks really nice right off the box. And I've seen a couple of videos on it. And I'm excited to take a look at it myself so this one also comes in in two different colors so you have this blue version you know there is also a black version but i went with the blue because i think this one might look just a little bit better okay so let's take a look at the specs on the back okay so we have your six inch hd plus display so it doesn't seem to be a full hd plus display so it is going to be higher than 720p but so the resolution is a little bit low but that's okay uh, you also have your 12 megapixel rear facing camera as well as uh, let's see so you also have laser out of focus which is cool and an 8 megapixel front facing camera with a selfie flash 32 gigabytes of storage and a and a really nice 3, three gigabytes of RAM so usually in budget phones 2 gigabytes of RAM is where they max out but this time they came through with, uh, with 3 gigabytes of RAM so you also have a 1.4 gigahertz octa-core processor now it does use a snapdragon processor i believe it's the 450 okay so as for pricing so this phone is going to be coming in at it depends so it, you can get it if you want the full retail price it's 180 and then you can get it for as low as i believe like 100 bucks so it's between 100 and 180 depending on the time and the deals that some carriers have going on but without further ado, let's just go ahead and unbox it and see how it looks like. So it does come, it does support a fingerprint sensor. And wow, so really nice. This is a large battery. Hold on, let's take it out. Okay, so really nice 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So battery life on this phone should be outstanding i have our literally i have really high expectations for it also you do have turbo charging so it which is their version of uh, fast charging <clears throat> and on the, i guess the back it has this reflective wave design so let's take a look at it and boom yeah this actually looks really nice i like it see this reflective color that's why i picked the blue one i think it will show better on here now initially as soon as i just turned it around i thought that there was like a dual setup type of thing but this is uh so right here is your 12 megapixel sensor and on the other side you have your laser autofocus uh, as well as your led flash and also your fingerprint which also has this uh motorola logo which is cool and yeah the back is look the back looks really clean and dare i say this is probably the best looking back on a budget phone that I've seen so far. Uh, I think the only two phones that come close are the LG Stylo 4 as well as the LG Q7 Plus. But this one, I think this one beats them in my opinion. Let me put this phone to the side real quick. I just seen something that I didn't like. And here's what else comes in the box. So nothing, nothing crazy, just some paperwork. So you have your SIM card, uh, SIM removal tool. Uh, some warranty information so the turbo power brick or wall adapter and your disappointing micro USB cable I thought we we're past that okay so a lot of budget phones are making the move to USB-C I'm kind of disappointed that Motorola didn't go that route and chose micro USB but hey that's that's just what they chose so let's take off this piece of plastic on the front and turn it on so I guess in their 18 by 9 aspect ratio displays they do tend to be taller but not wider so the bezels are slow uh, are small but something right here like you see this Motorola logo I think that I don't think that should be there but hey it is what it is and here's your 8 megapixel front facing camera your LED, your LED flash and this will act as your single speaker and it is front facing so the speaker quality should be good 
Okay, so on the right hand side you have your uh, power button as well as your volume up and down and they're kind of clicky and tactile but uh, I think I think they could, they could have been better. Alright, so here it is, it's all set up and complete and I like this blue background which matches the color of the phone, That's what, I think that looks really cool. Now what really could have set up the design, so the design on this phone overall, it's a pretty good design. Uh, the back has this curvature for a better grip, but I do recommend like a case or some sort of skin if they do support it for this phone, just for the fingerprint sensor, uh, not the fingerprint, just for because it catches a lot of fingerprints. Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend to put something over it, I, especially also if you want to protect it. Now this phone, I mean, it does really a good job resembling glass. Now it doesn't feel like glass, but hey, they did a really good job resembling glass. One thing that could have took it, took the design to the next level with this phone is the sides were made out of metal. I think that would have been a good look on Motorola's side. So you also have this raised to wake display, so that's pretty cool that they still uh, they still do that, and I think they're. Um, they, they, they implement it really good. Now this isn't like an OLED display or anything like that, but as of like just looking at it, it's a really good display. Now if it was sharper, that would have been better, but I guess that, that's just what they can do with the budget that they have. So like launching the phone app for example is really snappy and really quick. The messaging app is just as quick. Uh, I don't know, like the photos app, also quick. So, I mean, overall, right off first impression, this is a really nice phone, and I'm kind of impressed. Now, the battery on the, so it is, it does have a little bit of a weight, but it looks really thin for a phone that has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So, battery life is really promising on this phone. I will be doing more testing on it for the full review, so stay subscribed, and subscribe if you haven't for, to see that. Now the camera app, so let's quickly walk through the camera app, no, okay. So here's the camera app, it's pretty simplistic and straight to the point, so you have your shutter uh, button right at the bottom, and you can switch the video just by sliding like that, and you can, let's see, so these are, these are your different kind of uh, options, so you have your kind of photo modes, panorama, or you also have, well, you also have slow motion on this, uh, on this phone, which I will definitely test out. Now the settings, let's see what else we get. So the shutter sound, you can uh, either put it on mute or keep the shutter sound. And you have your different aspect ratio and different photo size. So you have your 12 megapixel 4x3, 16 by 9 at 9.4 megapixels, and 4x3 8 megapixel, uh, 18 by 9 at 7.4, and 16 by 9 at 6 megapixels. Uh, let's see, what else? So video capability, is, the maximum that it can shoot at is 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is pretty good. Okay. So yeah, I mean, the camera setting so far is pretty good, so let's see if we can find... Let's take a quick picture and see how it looks on the viewfinder. So, like this, for example. Alright, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so really quick at taking pictures. Now, it did take in like an extra second to focus but it's really good now it is underexposed even though i did tap to focus in and just exposure but hey that's just off the viewfinder off of just one picture so i can't really judge it just yet so stay tuned for the full review on that one one last thing that i want to test out before i'll let you guys go is the front facing single firing speaker Okay, so here's what I have to say about it. So this is definitely better than any rear-facing or bottom-facing speaker that I have tested out in a budget phone. And it does get loud. It's not the loudest, but it does definitely gets loud. And it doesn't really distort that much on highest volume. So overall, uh, a really, a really compelling, a, a really good speaker for the price of this phone. Okay, so yeah, let me just go ahead and put it down. This is it. I want to thank you all so much for watching this one. I really greatly appreciate anybody that subscribed to the channel. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. So, yeah, I mean, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and share this video if you're already subscribed. And let's get to that 10,000 subscriber by the end of the year. Uh, that would really mean a lot to me. And expect a lot of giveaways then. Okay, thanks for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next video.